Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I have another book haul, and it has not been that long since I had a book haul. I think it's been like a month and a half, two months. Oh yeah, it's bad, but I have some excuses. Those being, it was my birthday last month, so I did get some gifts from some friends. I also got some gift cards that I did use, and I also got a lot of book mail from some amazing authors and publishers who were willing to share their books with me, so, it's not all my fault, right? It's a lot of books, you guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I can make excuses all I want, but ultimately this is my fault because I either paid for them or requested them or accepted them or you know what, but it's fine, I'm happy about it. And I have a lot of exciting books to talk to you guys about today. But I will say this, I found some stuff that just blew my mind to find. Um, it is a grand finale for me as far as the books that I found over the past month and a half and it's amazing. And I'm so happy about it and so excited to tell you guys about it. So I'm gonna put it at the end. So stick around to the end to see the grand finale of my book haul. Before we get into that though, it would mean the world to me if you would like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please, as you're watching this haul, please tell me which of these books you're most eager to hear my thoughts on and which ones you think I would enjoy the most because there are so many, I know that I won't read all of them anytime soon. And I also probably won't end up reading all of them at all. I'll probably end up unhauling some at some point. So let me know which ones of these prioritize. I'm super excited about all of them right now, but I would love to hear from you guys. Okay, so how we're gonna do this is I'm gonna first talk about all the books that I received for free, whether I got those from giveaways or from um, the traveling book box or from authors or publishers, what have you. I'm gonna talk about those books first and then we'll talk about my pile of shame, the ones that I paid for. So let's go ahead and start off by talking about the books that you may have already seen in one of my previous videos, that being the traveling book box that just went up last week, I believe. Yes, I think it was last week. I don't know, time is all weird because you know I have kids and also grad school just started and I'm exhausted all the time. But yes, those books that I wanna to talk to you guys about are the Ruin of Kings by Jen Leons, Lyons, Lyons. I still didn't look up how to say her name, so I'm terrible. Um, but yeah, I just see this all the time. I really do. I see this series everywhere and I want to, at the very least, read the first book. I have heard some mixed things about it, that there are just a lot of perspectives and it's just kind of too much. And I love epic fantasy and people who love epic fantasy have said that about this book, that it's just not necessarily well executed at the beginning, but I've also heard it's amazing. So I wanna give the first book a try and see how I feel about it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about this one. Next up is Sheep Farmer's Daughter by Elizabeth Moon. You know, I, I mentioned that Jimmy had really loved this, but ever since, I picked this book, I've seen it all over the place. Like I've seen it on Instagram, I have seen it on booktube, somewhere, I know I have, and I've seen it on Goodreads. So this just keeps getting more and more hyped in my brain. And I think that this of all three of the books that I did get from the book box is the one that I'll be prioritizing most soon. And then the third and final book that I did get from the book box is The Ten, no, not The Ten, The Thousand Deaths of Arter Ben. That's right, I got Ben instead of ten, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is by Tyler Whitesides, and I really don't know a ton about this. I found out more about it as I was watching the book box series. Apparently the magic system revolves around like dragon feces or something like that. Um, so not super hyped about that, but that being said, I'm not gonna hold it against this book because maybe, <laughs> maybe it makes sense um, in the context of this novel. So it's a big one. Uh, so I don't see myself reading it soon necessarily, but I also just am drawn to big books. So we'll see what happens. It could be a surprise book that I read at some point this year. We'll see, we'll see. Now let's talk about some indie or self-pub books. So I received a lot of books in the past month and a half because I have gone through an awakening as it were, um, when it comes to self-pub and indie fantasy. I am loving so much of it right now. And thanks to the Indie Accords readathon, I am just, I'm finding so many books that I'm so excited about. And there are so many indie and self-pub authors who are so generous and so kind and were willing to share review copies with me. So I just wanted to talk about and highlight some of those really quickly. Um, but guys, there are so many good indie and self-pub books that I still wanna buy. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if I have even more books to haul at some point in the indie or self-pub area. So first let's go ahead and talk about The Legend of Blackjack by A.R. Witham. So as you see, I am reading this book currently. I am over halfway through now and I am adoring this. And this book I feel like is a favorite now of this small corner of booktube that I am so grateful to be a part of. I've seen so many amazing reviews for this book. Um, I'll leave some links down below, but Andrew loved it. I know Madison loved it and Patrick loved it and just like everybody. Everybody's crazy about this book and it is totally it, like it, it meets the hype, like it meets and exceeds the hype for me so far. Like I said, I still have 
like a third of the book left to go and I'm scared because I've heard that some people talk about like that one chapter or something. Something's gonna happen really bad and I don't want it to happen. Just to tell you a little bit about this book, we followed Jack, who is a 14 year old boy who has a very tragic backstory that you find out as the book progresses, or really like in the beginning part, you find out about it, but I don't wanna spoil it. Um, so yeah, he has just a really tragic backstory and he really feels alone and isolated. And then one night on his 14th birthday, a rhinoceros creature shows up at the end of his bed and talks to him and whisks him to away, whisks him away to this other world. Um, and things go from there. Uh, it is a portal fantasy. It is like, it's timeless is what it is. You know, it definitely is like, it's supposed to be like a middle grade or YA book technically because you have like a 14 year old, but this appeals to everyone in my opinion, adults, young people. The only thing I would say is this gets pretty dark sometimes. It really does. And so I would hesitate with like young, young readers. I would say like 14 or 15, like Jack's age um, and up would absolutely adore this book. And maybe younger, maybe that's just me being, you know, who I am. But uh, I think this book is absolutely incredible. I recommend it to everyone. I really do. And uh, I cannot wait to finish it and have a review up super soon. Next up is a book that I actually won in a giveaway on Patrick Ryan's channel. And this is actually really funny. I am like destined to read this book because I have won two giveaways involving this book, a physical copy and an audiobook copy. And so, I mean, this book and I are, are destined to be together. That book is A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah. Another one of those books that I've just seen all over the place. I don't know too much about it is the crazy part. I know that it is like epic fantasy. You've got like some royalty aspects going on and there's griffins. I know there are griffins and I love griffins. Really, you just have to say, Ian, Griffin and I will pick up the book. So, so I'm really excited about this one. And like I said, I now have both the physical copy and the audiobook copy for free. So I had better read this daggum book and soon. All right, next we have two books that I am super pumped to talk to you guys about. Those are Wistful Ascending and Return of the Griffin, both by JCM Byrne. I, I should probably hold one on both sides and not cover my face. Both by JCM Byrne. Um, and this is book one and this is book two. And I am obsessed with, with the series. Um, so I picked up this book after I saw Andrew, or actually I take that back. JCM Byrne was so kind to send me the first book um, after I expressed interest and had seen Andrew's review, or he hadn't even reviewed it yet. I just saw him talking about it on Discord and it sounded right up my alley. So the author was very kind and sent me this. And I told myself one night I was just gonna like pick up like the first chapter or whatever. And then I was like 25% into it and I loved it so much. Um, and so things went from there and I messaged the author on, on Instagram and I was just like, man, I'm loving your book. And then he sent me book two, which is crazy and so kind because I probably would have paid for it really quickly. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful and I just wanna talk about these books all day. So this is, superhero science fiction uh we have rohan right here who is a hybrid who is basically half human and half of this like higher species which are humanoid but have superpowers um and so he's like a superhero or he was a superhero but he retired from that and he fought in these intergalactic wars and now he has retired to this small not really small actually it's quite large uh space station in space called wistful and he just wants to live a really chill life he wants to assume a different identity be left alone really and just relax because he's been through a lot but a lot of things happen that will not allow him to just do his job and be left alone. And so he gets kind of called back into action a little bit while also trying to maintain his old identity and uh, things go from there. But I loved this book so much. I actually just finished it the other day and I'm, I'm obsessed. Like I said, you'll be hearing a lot from me about these books. Next up, we have another super kind authors series that they were kind enough to send me two books of. That author is Palmer Pickering. She sent me book one, Moon Deeds, and book two, Light Fighter. So I, so I actually just got these in the mail a couple of days ago. The author reached out to a bunch of us on Discord and asked if anyone would be willing to uh, accept some review copies and review these books. And I was like, these sound really amazing. I like the covers a lot. And so I said, yeah, please send them to me. I'll totally read them. And I actually plan on picking up Moon Deeds very soon because I'm just in like a sci-fi mood. I really am. Uh, but this is like a science fiction meets fantasy. So I know that basically there's like this technology that has emerged and the only thing that can really combat the technology is magic. So it's sci fantasy, which I'm always really interested in. And uh, yeah, it's gotten some pretty good reviews as well. So I am super excited to jump into these two books soon. They are very long. Uh, this book is over 500 pages and this book I believe is like almost 800 pages. So um, I'll definitely read book one soon and I will try to prioritize book two as well. But they're long. So, all right. So next we have The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn, the man himself. The publisher was kind of to send this to me. And look, guys, look at this dragon. 
It's gorgeous. This is a beautiful dragon. This is a beautiful book. And I'm so excited to read this. There are some people who are reading it on Discord uh, in September, I believe, on the India Chords Discord. So I think I'm probably going to have to join in. I just started grad school, so I'm a little scared. But there it is. This is described as an action-packed epic fantasy adventure perfect for fans of Brandon Sanderson, Brent Weeks, and Robert Jordan. Like, if that doesn't sell you, like, what will? So I am super excited about this. Again, I think that this copy is just so gorgeous. There are also illustrations inside of this, which I love. There are also illustrations inside of Blackjack, which are amazing as well. So definitely get a physical copy of that one as well. Uh, but this sounds amazing. I love the cover. I'm super excited to support Jim, and uh, I'll be reading and reviewing this very soon. Next, my awesome friend Fina over at Fina Reads sent me two books for my birthday, which was so kind and so unexpected, and it just really made my day when I got these. So I was really appreciative. Thank Thank you so much Fina for sending me first off come with me by Ronald Malfi I read and loved Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi really recently and so I was super excited when she got this off of my wish list um yeah what can I say I'm super excited to read this probably in September if not September definitely October because spooky time uh but I love Ronald Malfi he's one of my favorite new to me horror authors and I cannot wait to jump into this book and then the other book that she got me is one that she's been hyping up a lot on her channel. I'll actually go ahead and link her review for this book down below. And that is Light Blade by Zamil Akhtar. So I've heard a lot of good things about this author. He also wrote The Gunmetal Gods, or maybe it's just called Gunmetal Gods, I think. Uh, but this is his new progression fantasy that I have been seeing everywhere. And another beautiful blue dragon with this like orange too. Like, and there's purple down here. Like this is a gorgeous cover and I am super pumped about this one. It seems like just an action packed wild ride and uh, I am down for it. So thank you so much again, Fina, for sending me these two books. It was so kind. Okay, so we're down to the last two books that I did not purchase and then we will jump into the pile of shame. So the first of those two books that I wanted to talk about is the movie tie-in edition for Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I was sent this by Anchor Books. So thank you so much for sending this to me. Uh, I typically don't like movie tie-in editions, but I actually Actually think this is a really cool cover you've got this like spooky mansion in the distance which if you've read Salem's Lot you know about and you've got these characters right here it's just foggy and ominous and I'm super into that and I actually am planning on rereading Salem's Lot very soon just because it's been a long time and I'm going through the Dark Tower series and I hear that Salem's Lot is like a pivotal book to read for the Dark Tower and since it's been so long and I really honestly don't remember very much of this I was super excited that they sent me this because I definitely need to reread it so if anybody wants to reread this with me let me know and then and the last book that I want to talk about as far as books that I didn't pay for is A History of Fear by Luke Dumas. I don't know a lot about this book, to be honest. I want it in a Goodreads giveaway. I know that it is an eerie literary suspense debut tracing the harrowing, harrowing downfall of a tortured graduate arrested for murdering his classmate. So this is like a horror thriller type of book and uh, I don't know a lot about it, like I said. But again, the cover is super ominous and I'm into it and I definitely want to read it. It comes out in December, I believe. So I'll be reading this hopefully by then. Okay, so now that we are past all the wonderful books that I received for free, let's talk about the books that I paid for. Okay, so first off we have A Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill or Ryan Cahill. I still don't know which one it is. Uh, but this is a book that has been described as like Aragon for adults. It is the first book in an epic fantasy series that is ongoing. It is self-pub and it sounds amazing. These covers are fantastic fantastic. Uh, the other covers are really great as well. Um, and I have heard nothing but praise for these books. I've heard that the first book is good and that the second book is like mind-blowingly amazing. So I'm very excited to get into these. I'm actually supposed to be bettering this with some people in my family very soon. So I'm super excited to have this on my shelves and I know I'm gonna love it. Next is The Eighth Life by, who's this by? Nino, oh my gosh, uh, Nino Harachvili. Harachavili. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Look at that name, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, but this book has been kind of floating around on Instagram for a while. It is a translated work, so it's not originally in English. It's originally in Russian, I believe. Um, and it is historical fiction, and it is an epic family saga following multiple generations. And I really don't know a whole lot else about it. It says six romances, one revolution, the story of the century. So I've heard amazing things regarding people's emotions about this, but I really don't know a lot about the plot. But you guys, look how chunky this is. This is insane. So this is, I think, almost a thousand pages. And not only that, this has like the smallest font I have ever seen on a book. So I'm in love. 
with <laughs> this edition. This actually isn't out in the United States, I believe. This is a uh, UK edition, and I don't believe it's out in the United States, or maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen it anywhere. I just happened to stumble upon it at my local used bookstore, and I had to snag it. So I bought it, and I'm not ashamed about it. Next, we have the Book of the Month pick that I chose for the month of August. That is The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. This is a book that I really have been wanting to read. I've heard about it months ago, and I actually requested an arc of it on NetGalley and was denied, but that's fine. I'm not upset. I bought it anyway. It's fine. This is a horror book though. And anytime the book of the month selects a horror book, I am inclined to get it because they very rarely do. And I want to be like, please pick more horror. I'm going to get it every time just to support that. I really don't know a whole lot about the plot of this, except that it is very gritty that some people have compared it kind of stylistically to like Razorblade Tears um, or uh, Blacktop Wasteland, which are two of my favorite books over the past couple of years. I love them. And I'm super excited to find out more about this. I kind of want to go in blind just because I feel like it's kind of fun to do that with horror books. So I don't know a ton about it, but I'm very excited to read this very, very soon. Then we have Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. So this is one of my favorite thriller authors. I haven't read a ton of books by her, but everything I've read has impressed me. This book I actually found at the dollar store for a dollar, or I think it was like a dollar 25, but whatever, it was at the dollar store. Um, and I think this is her debut novel and I've seen it floating around the interwebs for quite a long time, but I have not prioritized reading it. So I was super excited to find it for a dollar in hardback. It's just perfect. Um, and and so yeah, now I own it and I better read it, maybe. Next we have a little free library find that was like finding buried treasure. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is like one of the most hyped books ever. I think, I think, uh, I really is. I, I, I can hardly think of a negative review that I've seen and I've seen about a billion reviews for this book. I know Jake over at The Bookish Drummer really loves this book as well, which really makes me feel more confident that I'm going to love it. I have read one book by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I did enjoy quite a bit. That was Malibu Rising, but I've been wanting to read more of her books ever since. Um, and I, ha I found this in a little free library. So I was like, I guess I have to read it. So I was super excited to get this book. It's gonna happen at some point. Then we have a few books that I actually purchased from my library. They have an ongoing book sale in like the main lobby area of the library. So I always check that out and get some amazing books. The first of those is Sadie, which is a mystery thriller YA novel. I don't really read a lot of YA, but I have heard a lot of particularly good things about this book and that it is quite emotionally impactful. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try, especially because I found it in like near perfect condition in hardback for like 50 cents. So I was very excited to find that and I am excited to read it at some point and see how I feel about it. I also found in my library, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. And I've actually owned this book before and tried to read it and couldn't get into it. This was like a long time ago, like probably in high school. Um, and I, I need to try it again. This is one of those books and one of those authors that I feel like I have to try. You know, I have to give it a go, like an honest effort, really commit to reading this book. I haven't read her other book, The Starless Sea either, um, but I want to, at least this one. I think I'm gonna start with this one. And if I really do enjoy this, then I will pick up The Starless Sea. But I don't know, I feel hesitant for some reason. So I'll go ahead and give this a go at some point. Like I said, I found it at my library for like 50 cents. So that was pretty cool. Then we have a book that is not in great condition, but I can maybe make it prettier um, and help it to heal. And that book is The Dark Tower, book seven in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. Look at this chonker. So this was the library edition. They marked it out. It's got some stains on it. Maybe I can fix it somehow. Um, but yeah, so I actually just finished Insomnia by Stephen King, which is kind of like an honorary Dark Tower book. People say it's a Dark Tower book and everything but name and uh, I'm obsessed with Stephen King books right now. I have been bitten by a bug and I have like massive plans to read a bunch of Stephen King books over the next few months and part of that is getting back into the Dark Tower series which I've only read the first two books in so I saw this book literally the day that I finished Insomnia in the library and I was like all right it's a sign. So I bought it and uh, yeah, I'm gonna read it. Super excited about that. Okay, I'm gonna start talking less because I still have quite a few books to get to and I don't want this to be 20 years long. So next we have We Men of Ash and Shadows by H.L. Tinsley. So I believe this was actually a finalist in the SPFBO contest thingamabobber last year. So I'm super excited about that. And I've also just heard that it's really good, like kind of grimdark fantasy or like not flint grimdark. It's like, what's the word? Not flintlock either. Oh God, it's gaslight. No, not gaslight. Gas lamp. Gas lamp. It's gas lamp fantasy. That's what it is. I remember not gas like dear God. Um, yeah, but I am just excited about that. It's shorter than I expected it to be when I bought it because I didn't look at the page count, but I kind of like that. I kind of like a short fantasy. So I'm very excited about this one. And we have another self pub book, The Living Water by Dan Fitzgerald. So I don't know basically anything about this book, except that it's like kind of like cozy fantasy, not really, but like low stakes fantasy, I guess. Um, and I'm excited about that. 
and it was like three dollars for a physical copy on amazon i don't know if it's still that cheap but if it is go check it out because who doesn't want a book for three dollars um and it sounds really fun so i'll read it i'll definitely read it at some point okay guys we have four more books and then we are on to the grand finale so stick around we're almost done i swear uh so next up is lockwood and company this is the first book the screaming staircase by jonathan stroud so this is another book that my book club and i are reading together for quarter three of the year so i was very excited about this it has a little blurb on there by rick riordan but this is like a supernatural detective agency set in uh england i believe and i don't know what time period it's set in but it is middle grade, I believe. Maybe it's YA, I don't know, but I'm excited about it. I always love a supernatural detective agency type thing. And so uh, I'm very excited to read this in probably the next few weeks. Then we have a book that I was super excited to find at my used bookstore. And uh, I'm hoping to read it pretty soon because I need to get into this series. That book is Mort by Terry Pratchett. So I actually own The Color of Magic, which is the first book in uh, the Discworld series that was ever written by or published by Terry Pratchett. But I've heard that that's not necessarily like the most recommended place to start, despite the fact that it was the first one. Um, there are a lot of recommendations from people on where to start. The two most popular, I think, are Guards, Guards or Mort. And personally, Mort just sounded a little bit more interesting to me. So it's also a little bit shorter. So I was very excited about finding it at my bookstore. So essentially in this book, I believe that death has taken an apprentice and it follows that apprentice or maybe it follows death or maybe it follows both. I don't really know. But... I'm excited. I'm gonna jump into, I'm gonna jump, I'm going to jump into Discworld very soon, I swear. If nobody else has jumped into Discworld, if there's somebody else out there who's interested, let me know. Maybe we can buddy read this thing and uh, talk about how weird it is together. Okay, so next up is a book by an author that I've been meaning to try for a long time. And I don't necessarily think that I will start with this, but I saw this physical copy in my bookstore, my half price books, and uh, I just thought it was such a cool cover. And so that book is In the Flesh by Clive Barker. Look how creepy this is. Is. is that not creepy? This is just a really old looking hardback collection of short stories. I believe it's called Tales of Terror. So yeah, I, I was struck by the cover. Really, I saw Clive Barker and I've heard a lot of really great things about Clive Barker's works. Um, and then I saw the cover and I was like, you know what? This is coming home with me. And it totally did. And I don't regret it. It's creepy as heck. And I'm here for it. Okay, so last individual book, then we will talk about my grand finale, super awesome treasure that I found. Uh, so the last book that I wanted to talk about before that is Love Stories by Trent Dalton. So this is another book actually that I don't believe has been physically published in the US yet, but Amazon had some of the UK copies available. Trent Dalton is one of my favorite authors. He wrote Boy Swallows Universe, which is one of my top five to 10 probably favorite books of all time. Um, and he also wrote All Our Shimmering Skies, which came out in the US last year. And I really did enjoy that book a lot as well. So let me tell you what this book is about. This is sort of nonfiction, sort of fiction, but mostly nonfiction, I believe. Um, essentially, Trent Dalton, the author, sat down on a corner with a little fold-out table and he sat in a chair and there was an empty chair. And he had a sign basically telling people to come and sit down and tell him a love story. And that's what they did. And he wrote them down. And that's what this book is. It's the love stories that he was told by strangers on a street corner and it sounds absolutely beautiful. And I think that Trent Dalton is one of my favorite authors because he's just so genuinely optimistic and hopeful, despite the fact that some of the things that he writes about in his novels are dark and sad and traumatic. He always like captures this glimmer of hope and I love that so much. And I think that this book is just gonna be like a boost of serotonin. I've heard that it is beautiful and uplifting and powerful and emotional and I'm here for it. So I will read this very, very soon, probably over time if I had to say, I don't think I'm gonna rush through it by any means, but I'm so glad that I have this. Alrighty guys, the moment you have all been waiting for, the grand finale, the treasure that I found that I'm so excited about. Maybe I'll be the only one excited about it. I don't know, but I'm really excited about it. So let me tell you a quick little story. One day, my wife sends me to the thrift store because I had to go get something. I think it was like a picture frame that I needed for a wedding shower we were throwing. Uh, but anyway, I was sent for something specific, but anytime you go to a thrift store, you check the book section. It's just what you do. At least it's what I do. Um, and so I'm looking at the book section. You've got the top shelf. I'm like, man, there's nothing here. There's nothing on the middle shelf. There's nothing on the other shelf. And then I look at the bottom shelf and I see this book, Weirdos from Another Planet, which is a collection of comics from the comic strip series, Calvin and Hobbes, which is the best comic strip series of all time. I grew up with the series. I mean, it wasn't like being published, I think when uh, I was young, but I read this specific anthology of comics and I loved it dearly. And so I was like, oh my gosh, Calvin and Hobbes, that's so cool. I haven't read them in so long. And so I grabbed it. But when I was done grabbing it, underneath it, there was also this one and this one and this one and this one i found a lot of calvin and hobbs guys like a lot it's they're not in good condition that's fine i don't care i don't read them for their condition there are one two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine Calvin and Hobbes collections, and I got all of them for a total of $4.72. It made my whole month, made my whole life, basically. I love these books, these characters, this comic strip series so much. It embodies everything that I love about life, basically. These are the best. <laughs> they are ridiculous and amazing, and I was just so happy to find them. And maybe that is a grand finale for nobody but me, but for me, it's the best. So there you have it. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you did, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Like I said, let me know in the comments which of these books you are most excited to hear my thoughts on or think that I would enjoy the most because there are a lot. I know there are a lot and I need to know what to prioritize. So please help me. This isn't even counting all of the books I got on my Kindle, which is a lot too because there were so many great sales over the past month. It's fine. It's fine. I'll read some books. Not all of them, but I'll read some books eventually. But thank you guys so much again for watching. I appreciate your time and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.